Hey everyone, it's Jack Raymond, online pastor. I'm really grateful and just honored to be able to close out our devotional series in the fruit of the Spirit. Well, as we've been walking through these nine characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5, verses 22 and 23, we hope that you've been encouraged and we hope that you've learned a lot. I know I have just hearing from our different staff members as they've shared each and every week. And uh, we're going to drop a link, uh, a playlist to all the past devotionals if you missed any. And what we'd also love to encourage you to do is to share it with a friend as well, to just text them that link or send them an email with that link. And what we hope that they'll take away from this whole series is this beautiful contrast in Galatians 5 of living according to the flesh and the fruit of the flesh that leads ultimately to death and to destruction but to reject that and to instead answer the call of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and the fruit of the Spirit, that love, that joy, that peace, that leads to life and ultimately everlasting life. And so we come to the ninth characteristic of the fruit of the Spirit, and it's self-control. So again, walking all the way from love, from joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and now to self-control. And this is something I've heard Pastor Graham say several times. It's a great mantra for the Christian faith. And to me, it is such a beautiful picture of what self-control is for the Christian. He puts it this way. It's saying no to sin and yes to God. Again, it's saying no to sin and saying yes to God. And of course, that's a lot easier said than done. In fact, I love the way Paul describes it in Romans 7, verses 23 through 25. He puts it. Uh, he literally describes it as a war going on within us. And that's why it's such a struggle for the Christian life, because ultimately there is a war going on within us each and every day. There's a war between sin and between the Holy Spirit. There's a war between the flesh and between Jesus who lives and reigns in us. And so to choose to say yes to God, to be obedient to God, is a daily decision and it's a war. It's a rejection of the enemy. It's a rejection of self. And ultimately, it's choosing to say yes to Jesus. And Paul admits that it's even a struggle for him. This is one of the greatest Christians uh, to ever live. Wrote nearly half of the New Testament. Planted countless churches. Pastored, preached, was a missionary, shared the gospel. And yet, this is how he describes his own life in Romans 7. He says, I do what I don't want to do, and I don't do what I want to do. Oh, wretched man that I am. And can I just be honest? I relate so much to that verse. It's so easy to find myself saying, absolutely, I don't do what I want to do, and I do what I don't want to do. Uh, but that's not where Paul ends. He goes on to say in verse 25, but thanks be to God for the victory that we have in Jesus. And so when we come to self-control, this is such an important starting place because a lot of times we hear a term like self-control and we think, okay, I've got to work harder. I've got to do more. And ultimately, self-control for the Christian is the opposite. It's saying that I can't do it alone, but I have to find help outside of myself. And one of the biggest, most uh, largest, well-selling material in the world is, is self-help books, self-help material, self-help resources. And we can learn from some of them, but ultimately we know this as a Christian, that the true help that we need doesn't come from ourselves; it comes from outside of ourselves. The true help, the only way to self-control is to say, I can't do it on my own, and ultimately I need Jesus. I can't say no to sin on my own and yes to God. The only way I can do that is through the Holy Spirit who lives in me, and ultimately a surrender to the Holy Spirit. So as we close our series, I want to give you the ABCs, I'm calling them, of, of self-control, this ninth characteristic of the fruit of the Spirit. So first we hit A, and this is, just as we've been talking about, it's admit that we cannot do this on our own. Again, it's admitting that we can't do this on our own. We're never going to truly be able to say yes to God and no to sin unless we admit that we can't do it on our own, that we need Jesus. Just like Paul said in Romans 7, 25, he says, but thanks be to God. What is the point of contrast? What ultimately turns everything around? Uh, it is God. It is the victory in Jesus Christ. The only path to victory is through Jesus. So A, we admit that we can't do it on our own. What's next? B, we begin each day with Jesus. 
And let me just tell you, I don't always start every day with Jesus. I wish I did, but I know the days that I do, it changes the way the rest of that day will go. And of course, we can spend time with Jesus throughout our day, and we should, but there's something so powerful about giving God our very, very first. In fact, I call it a principle all throughout the Bible, the principle of first, that God desires our first love that God desires the first fruits in our tithe and their offerings. And yes, I believe God desires our first of our day, that whatever it looks like for us, that we would spend the first of our day with him, whether it's a quiet time alone with him in our word, and maybe your schedule doesn't allow for that. But the beauty is we can pray at any point, uh, in any circumstance, whether we're, we're at work, whether we're taking care of a kid, whether we're surrounded with hundreds of people, we can still spend alone time with God reciting scripture uh, and praying and just crying out to him and saying, God, I need help. Maybe it's in this specific area. I need help and self-control and discipline. And ultimately, God answers, hears and answers those prayers. And so begin each day with Jesus. And then next, uh, we come to see, and that is that we need to confess when we fall short. Uh, the beauty of the Christian life is that we, we, we will fall short, but there's always grace. Uh, Paul later in Romans says that there is grace upon grace for the Christian. Uh, in Lamentations, it describes God's mercies as new every morning, that great is his faithfulness. I like to think of his grace like a waterfall. It never ends. There's no stop to his grace. There's no stop to his love. That the Bible describes his love is unconditional, meaning that there is no condition in which God will not love his children. In fact, Paul in the very next chapter of Romans, Romans 8 says that there is neither height nor depth nor anything on earth nor anything in heaven that can separate us from the love of God. And so we confess when we fall short. We ask God for his forgiveness. We ask for God's help. We ask for God's healing. And he will bring healing and he'll bring help as we continue to walk forward in self-control. And then one more bonus. So I know it said ABC. So admit uh, that we can't do it on our own. Admit that we need Jesus, that we need the victory in him. And then B, begin each day with Jesus. Start each day with him, whether in prayer, whether through uh, personal time with him. And then C, confess when we fall short. And then the bonus is D, and that is to develop daily habits. Uh, this was something Pastor Graham shared a few months ago in our online membership class. We're going to uh, drop a link in the comments to that as well. But he says, habits are so essential for the Christian life because habits are what we do on autopilot. And unfortunately, a lot of times our habits can be sinful, that we just naturally do sin over and over again, and we don't even know it. That's why David prays in the Psalms, God, search my heart and show me uh, the sins I don't even know about, that don't even uh, aren't aware to me in my mind and in my heart. Uh, but we can also create righteous daily habits habits of worship, habits of memorizing scripture, habits of just as we talked about earlier, beginning each day with God, that's a habit. And all of a sudden, that power of autopilot begins to work uh, for self-control and for righteousness and for following Jesus. So again, the ABCs that we admit that we need Jesus, admit we can't do it on our own, begin each day with Jesus and confess when we fall short. And then the bonus is, to develop daily habits of following Jesus. And so I hope you have been so encouraged by this series. Again, we would love uh, to hear from you. Uh, just share with us in the comments what you've learned, whether it's from this devotional or any of the devotionals in this series. We always want to hear from you. We want to connect with you. We hope you know that we're just so grateful for our online community here at Prestwood. Believers all over the world, we have a lot of exciting things ahead uh, but thank you so much for tuning in to this devotional series, and we hope that you will be filled with the Holy Spirit, and as Paul goes on to say at the end of Galatians 5, that you will walk in the Spirit each and every day.